What's up? Welcome. Welcome to Phantom Fights. Uh, it's pretty late here. Little children sleeping underneath where I, where I live. So, gotta try to be quiet. But welcome <laughs> to Phantom Fights. Hello, we're here. It's another tournament match we have for you today. What could be the greatest match ever. And why do I say that? Well, because every match could be the greatest match ever. We know until it's played, guys. Come on. No, we have got the 15 seed Jake Meltzer going up against the 18 seed Mr. Brooklyn Vale. Uh, Brooklyn getting his win off of the Goat Man, the goat Eli man. Boatman, last season. And then Jake Meltzer, I believe, beating Andrea Malabog Andrea, to Andrea. get here into the tournament today. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, Matches, different matches, but I think we're in store for a fun match today. Caleb, you are here with me. How are you doing, and what do you think about the match? Doing great. I love tournament time. It's my favorite time of year. Getting to bring in 32 people, seed them out, and watch them go to war. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, and these are two players who uh, I'm actually really excited to see how they do. Jake, the other Jake M. Meltzer, uh, he played a really good game uh, in the manager bowl to even get the fun DMC faction a spot. That included a lot of fandom questions. That was the big question mark for him going in and signed up for fandom singles this year, played a hell of a game against Andrea. Uh, he, he's one of the people I'm looking out for in this tournament. Uh, and Brooklyn, ring rust is a thing, but not for Brooklyn Vale. That's a thing. He's come back from a lot of matches, a lot of periods of time, and picked up the game like he's riding a bike. Uh, Brooklyn, the big Canadian boss man himself, uh, coming back to fandom. It's very exciting. I love it whenever we see people step away from the game for a little bit and come back. We have a couple of people who have done that in this tournament, uh, making their returns, which is very exciting. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see how these two do tonight. Yeah, we got two one and O's battling it out for uh, round number two. So we'll see what happens. Let's go talk to them right now in the promos. Um, yeah, so Warzone Brooklyn is a little fucking bitch. Uh, Fandom Brooklyn here is though, and Fandom Brooklyn is full fucking heel. Uh, we're here to like derail the the Jake Meltzer hype train. One like the manager bowl, the free for all. Now he's gonna be like the, the hot shit in Fandom. Um, I thought we were we were playing Jake Maragnoni, like the like like the cool Jake M. Yeah, not going to lie, up until about 30 seconds before this call started, I thought we were playing Jake Maragoni. Um, I was like, damn, my boy Brooklyn's in deep. You know, it's going to be a tough battle. Um, I honestly don't know anything about this guy. Um, so I, I don't know how to feel going into this. I mean, this guy even had the audacity to turn down me letting him borrow my Skyfall Blu-ray DVD in order to help him study. So listen, like, an, like it's, it's just another American turning down the politefulness of some young Canadians. But listen, we're repping the new British Empire today. They are, we are back. We are going to win for some reason today. Sorry for what's about to happen. Yeah, sorry indeed. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm pretty sure Canadians aren't so can't be that mean. I'm pretty sure Mounties are knocking on his door right now to come after him. That's kind of what I thought. I have honestly no idea who his manager is. I've never seen him before, but. I mean, we'll see. They want to go heel. They could be heel. That's the only thing I know really about Brooklyn is he writes decent general trivia questions. But I've never seen him actually play in a match. So I guess we'll see what happens. Jake, but I know you. I've seen you play, and I know you have some skills. How are you feeling about tonight? I feel pretty good. I did watch Brooklyn's match against uh, Eli the Goatman, Boatman, uh, to his little scouting mission. And uh, – I was uh, I was underwhelmed, but I'm not lo overlooking anybody uh, in this or any tournament. Uh, I am solely focused on this match. My goal coming into this tournament was to win this match because fandom is fandom is house money for me. Uh, most people know I make my bones over in the general trivia. This is uh, I did the, like Tim mentioned. I did this basically to get us to be a faction. And I figured, why not use that knowledge? Uh, so that's why I'm here. Uh, I did I did pretty well in my last match, but I know I can do better. Uh, and that's what I aim to do today. So Brooklyn, I just want to say, though, to clear something up, the reason I didn't uh, get that Skyfall DVD from you, I already got one. So didn't need it. So uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, the, mean. Uh, it wasn't being mean. You already had it. No, I, I'm expecting a good match today. I'm expecting this to be fun. I know you're ready. We're ready. Let's do this. Uh, Coho. Yeah. You know what those were? 
some what? What do I have? Spicy hot promo. <laughs> oh. wow. Let's bring that. No, actually, we shouldn't bring that back. Uh, those were some promos. Brooklyn taking a turn. Is the new British Empire back? That's what I was gonna say. That's a that's a name I haven't heard in a long, long time. That that name gives chills down my spine. Sure. And then also, uh, Jake, pretty con- coming in, pretty confident. Um, and yeah, let's just see what happens. Uh, I'm excited. Fifteen versus eighteen. They're very close in the seedings. Who knows what could happen? Anything could happen. Let's get into it. Round number one is gonna work like this. We are going to give 10 questions from 10 random categories to the competitors. Each question is worth one point a piece. If they get all 10 questions correct, they will be issued a bonus question. Um, you have three repeats in the challenge rule for the entirety of the match. Gentlemen, any questions as we get into round number one? Nope. Coho, what is question number one in the match? Question number one comes to the category of the Wizarding World. <clears throat> In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, who gives Harry the Marauder's Map? Um, what would you use the Marauder's Map for? See, to me, the Marauder's Map feels like those Snapchat maps uh, where you just see people just randomly around your town, and I kind of hate those. So I never thought about that, but yeah. you are kind of 100% correct. Five. Very ahead of its time. <laughs> Two points for you, too. Yeah. One pens down. Uh, let's start with Jake. Fred and George Weasley. And Brooklyn. Serious Black. Jake is correct. It is Fred and George. So we move on to question number two, which is in the category of DC. In what DC film will you find the locations of Argo City and the Phantom Zone? Um, I didn't know if you know this or not, uh, but DC stands for Detective Comics. It's true. In fact, I, it's so I, wild that when D when they were called DC Comics, it stood for Detective Comics Comics. Crazy. Five. Crazy. Four. Three. Two. Wild. Stuff. One. Pens down. Brooklyn. We'll start with you. Superman two. And Jake. I put that, but then I changed it to Supergirl. It is Supergirl. Supergirl. The girl is correct. All right, your third question, I believe, is two nothing as we get into the category of fandom Oscars. What was the last fandom film to win Best Production Design? Um, what is the best design produced that you've seen? We'll not say even, f- just any film shape of no, world. not even film, just the world. Oh, the world! My bedroom set looks great. <laughs> you see that Creed poster? Two, one. I've seen it so many times. Uh, let's start with Jake. Black Panther and Brooklyn. Black Panther. That is correct. correct. So Brooklyn gets on the board. It is three to one as we get into the next question, which is in Star Wars. What was the last Star Wars film to feature Tatooine as a location? Going back to the last question, when we're talking about just design of production of everyone's sets, mm-hmm. I got to say, yours might be my favorite. Thanks. You know, I, um, I try really hard to just sit in front of shelves. Yeah, I think it looks it works for you. It's just it just <laughs> looks good. It makes you like seem like you have a bunch of books, but for movies. I'm the Blu-ray guy. Five, four. And seven. there's more over there, too. One. Oh, you want to buy a Blu-ray? You want to buy, buy some Death Sticks? Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. And Jake. Episode 9, Rise of Skywalker. Jake is correct. Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Skywalker. All right, your fifth question in the round comes to the category of Mission Impossible. What does IMF stand for in the Mission Impossible series? All right, I'm going to call you out on something. Yes. Are, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Did you know that when I am saying the answer, you also say the answer at the same time? It's sort of a weird thing. It's a habit. Is it a habit? It's a habit. Because when when I it's when I it's a thing where like I when I lead or whenever Kane led, I was used to just being like, This is the answer. I'm just like I'm like hearing an echo somewhere in my bed. My bad. I'm working on it, trust me. Let's see if you do it this time. (laughs) That's down. Jake. Impossible Mission Force. And Brooklyn. Oh, I had no idea. I just know that I really miss Frogger. (laughs) 
<laughs> We're gonna go, Jakey. You're correct. Jakey, that was really funny. Okay. Ghost point for Brooklyn. <laughs> All right, guys. Your next question is in scores and soundtracks. What band performed the song "All Star" in Shrek? Um. Oh man, that was really funny. <laughs> what, what game do you miss? <laughs> um, you remember uh, Star Wars Republic Commando? I do. It's good. It's good. I haven't played it in a long time. I kind of miss it. I miss the original Star Five, Wars Battlefront two. Four, three. I own that too. Me too. One pens down, uh, Brooklyn. You might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> and Jake. Uh, I played Kotor for the first time last year. It was awesome. Uh, Smash Bros. Uh, that is correct on both accounts, Mr. Meltzer. Uh, yes. So, what is the next question? Go uh, six to two as we get to the seventh question in the category of Middle Earth. How many dwarves are in the company of Thorin Oakenshield in the Hobbit trilogy? Um, Counting Thorin. How I how many dwarves are in the company? Okay. Um. Company's a fun word to say. Company? Company. 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 Five. Four. Company. Company. One. <laughs> Pens down. Uh, Brooklyn. Eight. And Jake. Thirteen. Jake is correct. Thirteen, 13 is correct. All right. We move on to the next question as Jake stays perfect through seven. The next question is in Planet of the Apes. This is where I screwed up last time, so we'll see. <laughs> what rank does Fade have among the ape army in Burton's Planet of the Apes? This is the worst one, right? We, we can agree this yes. is the worst one? Yeah. Thank I you. think so. Cody thinks Cody it's like got so mad at me when I put out my thing, and I said this is the worst one. Nick thinks Beneath is the worst. Cody thinks Beneath is the worst. I think, I it's, think this is by far the worst. Five, I think this is the worst for sure. Four. Three. This is one of the worst fandom movies. One. Pens down. Uh, Jake, let's start with you. Here comes the general. <laughs> and Rise up! Oh, sorry. Uh, really busy, so I think they ha think she was on uh, drive through sandwiches that day. Jesus. General is correct. All right. And his uh, right hand man. And his right hand man. Uh, your penultimate question of the round comes in the category of YA dystopia. In the Hunger Games, Catching Fire, what district are Wyrus and BT from? Um, if I were in this world, I'd probably be from, like, District 17. Uh, I'm actually from District 47 myself. That would make sense that you would be from 47. Mm -hmm. It's actually from uh, fucking A47 is the full That's designation. True. That's true. That's true. Five, yeah. four, three, two. One. Pens down. Let's start with uh, Brooklyn. Seven. And Jake. Shot in the dark. I said eight. That's incorrect. We were looking for three. Three. So no perfect rounds today uh, as we get into the final question, which is in the category of Worlds of DC. In Justice League, Wonder Woman stops a group of terrorists at what type of location? I was gonna say, what dis what does District Seventeen produce? Because District Forty Seven produces shitty questions. That's fair. That's fair. Five. Also, Oscar winning actors. Three, two, one. Hands down. Okay, let's get uh, answers starting with Jake. I said a bank. And Brooklyn. I said an airport. Uh, both are incorrect. We're looking for a courthouse. It is a courthouse. Uh, so um, we end round number one with eight. Uh, Jake has eight. Brooklyn has two. Is that what you have, Coho? Uh, this is exactly what I have. Okay, so let's get into round number two. Here's how it's going to work. We are going to uh, bring up the wheel from wheeldecide.com. Each player is going to have a chance to spin the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it, or they can choose to spin again, but they have to keep whatever they spin the second time. Um, you will get five questions worth two points apiece, unless you go to multiple choice, then it will be worth one. And uh, guys, stealing is available in round two, so please check your corners and really think before you throw out an answer, okay? Uh, so the categories on the wheel Check today. Your <laughs> the, the categories on the wheel today are Pixar, MCU, Marvel, Middle Earth, 
James Bond, Horror Icons, Star Trek, and DreamWorks Animation. So, Jake, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer to Brooklyn? Gonna... This is familiar. Uh, just like yeah. last match, but uh, unlike last match, I'm going second. We'll defer this time. Change it up. Yeah. All right. So, deferring to Mr. Vale, we'll bring in his van manager, Corey. Uh, guys, this is going to be your spin at the wheel. You got him right where you want him, Brooklyn. Good exactly. Job. Six point deficit. Exactly. There, there you go. We got fix All right. right. Cool. All right. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. All right. Like they keep going for it. All right, uh, Coho. Do you want to give Mr. Brooklyn his questions in Pixar? Absolutely. All right, uh, Brooklyn. I'll give you your questions. In the category of Pixar. Are you ready, sir? Uh, sure. All right. Your first question in Pixar. In Finding Nemo. Nemo says that Sandy Plankton told him that what sea creature can live to be a hundred years old? Uh, sea turtles. Final answer. That is correct for two points. Uh, your second question: Brenda Chapman and Mark Andrews directed which Pixar film? Uh, is 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 it that one? Inside Out. Final answer. That is incorrect. Jake, the chance for a two-point steal. Brave. Wow. That that is correct for a two point steal. I knew it's what I've seen. All right, uh, Brooklyn, your third question in the category of Pixar: What city does Joe Gardner live in before dying in Seoul? Oh, uh, I'm gonna probably be a dumbass whenever I hear this. Multiple choice. Uh, your multiple choice options are A. New York, B. San Francisco. C, New Orleans, or D, Chicago? Oh, okay, so um, A, New York, final answer. That is correct for one point. Uh, your fourth question in the category of Pixar. Which Pixar film features a British spy named Finn McMissile? Oh, fucking Jesus. Uh, curse to final answer. <laughs> the worst. That is correct for two points. Nobody, nobody should get points for knowing that. Well, you do. Uh, in your last question in the category of Pixar, in Coco, Hector and Miguel go to visit Chicaron to retrieve what? Uh, they go to Chicaron to... Um, I'm going to use my first repeat. All right. Uh, your first repeat. In Coco, Hector and Miguel go to visit Chicaron to retrieve what? They go, to, they go there to... I know they're, they go to retrieve something, but that's where the big twist is. And then it's like, oh, it's like Hector's actually kind of important to the movie now. Um, multiple choice. Uh, your options are A, his femur. B, a guitar, C, makeup to disguise Miguel, or D, disguises? I believe it's... I believe it's the, it's it's a guitar. Final answer. That is correct for one point. All right. So Brooklyn gets his total up to eight, but with that steal in there, Jake goes up to ten. Uh, so we will bring back the wheel and Mr. Meltzer's uh, manager as we get this spin underway for Mr. Meltzer. Good steal. Excellent. And it lands on Star Trek. Would you like to keep it or spin again? Keep it that one. Right? Yep. Keep it. All right. So, Jake, I will give you your questions in Star Trek as soon as I find them. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Where on the Enterprise is Bones when we first see him in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock? He's in he's in Spock's room. Yes, that is correct for two points. Your second question. In Star Trek Nemesis, who goes with Picard and Data to investigate the signal on Kolaris 3? Five. Four. Three. Two. Worf. That is correct for two points. Your third question. What actor narrates the classic boldly go speech at the end of Star Trek Into Darkness? Chris Pine. That is correct for two points. 
your fourth question. In the undiscovered country, a shock wave is sent out due to the ex explosion on Praxis, a moon belonging to what race? Uh, it belongs to the uh, Klingons. That is correct for two points. All right, we are in a situation now where if Jake hits this question for any point value, he will win by knockout. Jake, your final question in Star Trek. In The Wrath of Khan, who is the captain during the Kobayashi Maru test that Kirk oversees? It is Savick. And your winner by way of knockout, Jake Meltzer. Uh, yes, the answer was Savick. Um, going 10 for 10 in Star War or Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, a final score of 20 to 8. Uh, Koho, what did you think of the match? Uh, Jake put on a performance today. Uh, he came out and did real good. He almost got the perfect round one. Uh, and uh, just he knew track. He got that steal. That steal ended up being super important. Uh, but Brooklyn, for his first match back, put up a solid game, uh, and he did really well in that Pixar category for the most part. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this tournament shakes out from here. But a KO is nothing to sneeze at to start your tournament run. Uh, nothing at all. And I mean, Brooklyn's only one and one, so like he's right. still got. A, he's he's back. still in a great place with this record. Let's start by talking to Brooklyn and Corey guys. Uh, Brooklyn. Didn't uh, play the best game ever today, but you played good nonetheless. You got a category that you were confident in and did well in it. It just came down to that one steal that kind of uh, made it a knockout. What? How are you feeling about the game? I'm like I, I'm I'm feeling fine. This um, depending on when this goes up, this will either be it'll either be explained in time or or it will have already been explained. But it'll 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 make sense in some way, shape, or form. I mean, getting Pixar was ni was nice in round two. I there are just round que round one questions I didn't know or was either like flipping on. Um, but yeah, no, um, Jake played really good in, in, in round one and I can't really judge him for that, but Hey, I'm going to still, I'm going to still try I'm going to still send you that nightfall Blu-ray rock my words. You will get that. <laughs> Fair. Um, Brooklyn, you, like I said before, you're one and one now, so still a good record. Um, is there anybody that you want to play to try to get another win on the record and get back up to, uh, above 50%? Am I allowed to play Jim Green? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe? Okay. Co Coho's got to play him first in the tournament. Yeah. Um, but then post tournament, we can maybe set something up. I don't okay. Know. Or, you know, or if, or if you want to, because I know that this guy, this guy is <laughs> really, is really good at some fandom categories, but we're not going to be available for a little bit. So I would definitely come back to get this guy into fandom. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, hopefully we can see any of those options very soon. Guys, um, congrats on a game well played. Let's move over to the winner today, uh, Mr. Jake Meltzer. Jake, you won by KO. You are now 2-0, and moving on to round number two of the tournament. How are you feeling? I didn't see that one coming, uh, especially when he got Pixar. I know that's a strength of his. Um, but I felt, pretty, I felt pretty good coming into this match, and it, round one went about the same as my first match. I did well. Um, track is just, uh, I think uh, I've put some people on notice now that uh, track is a strength. So no secret anymore, I guess. But um, yeah, no, this was, my, this was my goal. My goal was to win one match in this tournament. And now I'm just playing with house money at this point. Whoever I play next... If it's what I think it is, uh, I'm really going to be in for it. Uh, but uh, it's going to be fun regardless because Phantom is fun for me. Uh, and I'm glad that I played as well as I did today. It was an improve. All I want to do is improve from match to match. And I definitely did that today. Um, so I'm glad that I can help get Fun DMC further in this tournament. And uh, See if we can make some noise. Yeah, hey, Jake played great. I mean, eight in round one is great. Uh, you get luck when you get the category you want in round two. You did exactly what you need to do. You got all the points, so uh, didn't have to worry about a round three today. So I have another day to try to figure out how to work that uh, as a manager. Uh, but you did well. Made it to the next round, and 
at least you know, even if it's going to be someone that's really good, they're going to have to be put on alert and not sleep on you just because they know a lot. Yeah, you will be playing the uh, winner of Mr. Kane McMillan and uh, the uh, kind of a new one of the new stars of fandom, Brittany Tapley, uh, who just won the play in to get in here. That's who you have. So uh, one of those two people, uh, how are you uh, feeling about either of those matchups? Well, I, I don't know Kane very well. I know he makes the graphics, but that's about that's it. True. Charles. Uh, I know Brittany is nasty. Like, I've seen her play. Uh, I know she's no joke. So if I play her, I know I'm going to have a fight on my hands. I assume Kane is pretty good, too. So I know I'll have a fight on my hands either way. But uh, I will be ready. Apparently, I have to bow before Kane if I play him. Uh, so we'll see what happens when we get there. But uh, I'm just excited to keep going. That's uh, all that matters at the end of the day. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, uh, congratulations on the win and the KO. We will see you in round number two of the tournament. Coho, any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, that was a very strong showing from Jake. I'm very excited to see how he does in the next round against either of those players, because I'll be honest with you, the, the most exciting announcement was that Kane was back for this tournament. And I'm, I'm excited to see how Kane does. I'm excited to see how Brittany does both of them. Very strong players. I'm excited to see which either which one of them comes out and which how either one does against Jake in the next round. Absolutely. So that's going to do it for us today at Fandom Fights. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you very soon with the next tournament match. So for everybody here today, Jake, Anthony, Corey, Brooklyn, Coho, and myself, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm so glad you came. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. Remember, please discard all candy wrappers and popcorn containers in the nearest trash receptacle. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Are they all gone? Uh, is, is, there, is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Good.